Have you ever noticed how the world's changing faster than we can keep up? I mean, remember when we thought online shopping was revolutionary? Now we're talking about artificial intelligence, AI, that can write novels and create entire economies out of thin air. That's crazy, right? Well, let me tell you a quick story. Just the other day, I was watching the U.S. news and observed a news story with a lady at a grocery store. Nothing unusual. When I noticed something weird at checkout, this lady had no purse, no phone, but somehow she walked out with her groceries like magic. Turns out she scanned her palm. Her palm, yo. <laughs> no cash, no card, just her Hand. Now, I'm not easily rattled, but something about that felt off. You know what I mean? Like we're stepping into some futuristic sci-fi world we didn't sign up for. And it got me thinking, all this talk about AI, digital currency, biometrics, it's becoming more than just convenience. It feels like we're being nudged towards something much bigger, something we might not fully understand. But here's where it gets interesting. I remember a passage from the Bible. You've heard it. Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 to 17. And it says, And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And I wondered, are we already in the middle of that prophecy? Could artificial intelligence and digital currency be the modern day version of that mark? And before you shrug it off as just another conspiracy theory, let's take a moment to really think about it. What if the world we're living in right now, the technology we're embracing, is aligning with something much much deeper? Could we be inching closer to something that was predicted thousands of years ago? I mean, who would have thought your next transaction might involve more than just tapping your card, right? But what about you? Does this all seem like progress or are we walking right into the unknown without even realizing it? Let's dive in because what we're about to uncover about AI, digital currency, and the end times might just change the way you see everything happening around us. All that and more right here on the Pretty Fox Podcast. Welcome to Pretty Fox University, where men and women of value are inspired by God, beauty, wisdom, and empowerment. I'm your Dean founder and host, Crystal J. Get free and exclusive content by joining the tribe. But first, you gotta give this video a thumbs up. Next, subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification to be informed each time a hot new topic drops. Last but not least, check out the description box for more info on how you can donate to the channel. Grab one of those three journals available down below and tune in every Every Monday for the hottest topics no one else wants to discuss. XOXO Crystal J. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pretty Fox University. You're tuned in to the Pretty Fox Podcast. I'm your Dean Founder and host Crystal J. And if you're new here, this is the place where we dive deep into the most pressing, sometimes controversial topics of our time, all through the lens of biblical truth. Whether it's navigating modern issues, unraveling conspiracy theories, or diving into Bible study, I'm here to offer Christian advice and insights you won't find anywhere else. Today, we're tackling something big, artificial intelligence, AI, digital currency, and how these tech advances might be lining up with biblical prophecy. Could we be living in the times the Bible warned us about? Is this technology just convenience or could it be tied to something much deeper? Hmm. In this video, we're going to be breaking it all down. First, we'll look at what the Bible says about the mark of the beast and how it's linked to buying and selling. Then we'll explore how AI and digital currency fit into the bigger picture. Are they signs of the end times or just overhyped trends? Finally, 
I'll share some thought provoking questions that might change how you see the world right now. So if you're ready to take a deep dive into the mystery of technology and prophecy, let's get started. But before we dive into the real meat of today's topic, I want to take a quick moment to invite you to be a part of this journey with me. If you find value in these conversations, make sure to hit that like button and share this video with friends or family who might need to hear this. And hey, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and tap that notification bell so you don't miss any of the deep dives we're doing into faith, prophecy, and the world around us. I'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below do you think ai and digital currency could be part of biblical prophecy or are we reading too much into it your insight matters it's all about building a community where we can grow and learn together and if you feel led to support the channel and the work we're doing here there's a link in the description box where you can donate your generosity helps me keep bringing these conversations to life reaching more people with the truth and love of christ so thank you all for your support it truly means the world to me all right, let's get into it. Now, I know the idea of AI, artificial intelligence, digital currency, and the end times might sound like something out of a sci-fi movie, but if you've been paying attention to what's happening in the world today, it's hard not to see the parallels to biblical prophecy. The question we need to ask ourselves is this, are we just witnessing the natural progression of technology or are we living in the very times that the Bible warned us about? I wanna make a, a key point here, um, the mark of the beast and buying and selling. I did reference the scripture uh, in the intro, right? Let's start by looking at a powerful scripture, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 17, which gives us a very clear picture of what's to come in the end times. It says, and he caused it all, all, both small and great, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. The book of Revelation was written by the apostle John, one of Jesus's original disciples. John is traditionally believed to have written this prophetic text while in exile on the island of Patmos around AD 95 to 96. Revelation was written to provide encouragement and hope to early Christians facing persecution. It served as a warning about the struggles to come and outlines the ultimate victory of God over evil. Okay, the purpose of this passage and revelation as a whole is to reveal the end times, the return of Christ and the final judgment. Its aim is to prepare us as believers for the challenges we would face, emphasizing the importance of faithfulness and discernment. So the key themes of this verse are number one, it has a universal impact in that this verse emphasizes that the mark is going to affect everyone it says both small and great rich and poor free and bond this highlights the totalitarian nature of the system that will emerge showing no one will be exempt from its control okay number two control over commerce the statement that no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark indicates a future where economic participation is linked to allegiance to the system. It suggests that the ability to engage in basic economic transactions will be tied to compliance with the mark. Number three, spiritual implications. So what this means is that receiving the mark is seen as a form of allegiance to the beast which is often interpreted as the Antichrist, which poses a significant spiritual dilemma for us as believers because it presents a choice between economic survival and faithfulness to God. There are three main interpretations and implications um, in this passage. Number one is to mark as being technological. Many modern interpretations suggest that advancements 
and technology like digital currency and biometric identification could serve as precursors to the mark of the beast. The emphasis on the right hand and the forehead is seen as a potential reference to biometric implants and digital IDs. Number two is societal control. The control over buying and selling reflects a larger theme of technology increasing, increasingly governing daily life. Okay. Number three, moral and ethical dilemmas. So this verse raises profound moral questions about participation in the system that may oppose biblical principles. For many, the choice between survival and faith will be a crucial moment of testing. But before we move on, I just want to share my belief on the metaphoric interpretations of the right hand and the forehead as mentioned in this verse, because it's very, very critical. Number one, I see it as a symbol of action and thought. What do I mean by that? The right hand. The right hand is often associated with action, strength, and work. In this context, receiving a mark on the right hand could symbolize an individual's willingness to engage in actions that align with the system of the beast. It may represent the physical acts of loyalty, commerce, or participation in the world's economy. Now, when it comes to the forehead, the forehead typically symbolizes thought, belief, and identity. A mark on the forehead could represent the acceptance of the beliefs and ideologies of the beast system. It, it suggests a mindset that aligns with the values of the system, indicating an internal commitment rather than just external compliance. Number two, the second point I want to make as it relates to this is identity and allegiance. So to me, the mark can be seen as a metaphor for identity. By marking the right hand and the forehead, it symbolizes a complete identification with the beast, both in actions, the right hand, and in thoughts or beliefs, the forehead. So this interpretation underscores that allegiance to the beast is not merely a matter of physical compliance, but it also involves a profound internal commitment. Number three, total conformity. This duality I would say duality. It emphasizes a holistic conformity to the beast system. What do I mean by that? It suggests that followers will be required to conform both behaviorally through their actions and ideologically through their beliefs. It can, it can be interpreted as a warning against the dangers of total assimilation into a system that opposes God. Number four, I would say is spiritual warfare. In a spiritual context, the right hand and forehead could signify the ongoing battle between good and evil in the believer's life. The mark could represent the ultimate choice between following God's way or succumbing to a system that is against his will. Number five is cultural and societal commentary. What do I mean by this? Um, metaphorically, the passage may also comment on the societal pressures to conform. The emphasis on these locations could reflect how society tries to dictate our actions, work, economic participation and our thoughts which are our belief systems our values so this interpretation aligns with current discussions about technology's influence on personal behaviors and beliefs now think about that for a moment buying and selling something we do every single day is tied to this mark according to this verse not just some people but everyone regardless of their status. And here's the thing, we're already seeing systems that could make this a reality. Look at the rise of digital currency, whether it's cryptocurrency, NFTs, uh, di digital wallets, or even biometric payment systems. We're slowly moving away from traditional cash. The question is, could these technologies be setting the stage for what Revelation is talking about? Could digital currency be the precursor 
to a global system where buying and selling will require more than just the swipe of a card, but a mark on digital identification. The second point I want to make is about AI and control. All right, there's, there's AI. We're living in a world where artificial intelligence is becoming more and more integrated into every aspect of our lives. It's predicting our behavior, it's monitoring our spending, and even controlling financial markets. In a way, it's like we're handing over control to something we don't fully understand. That brings me to another passage of scripture from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3-4. to It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Number one, let me, let me start with context of passage, right? The Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the church in Thessalonica to address concerns about the return of Christ and to clarify misunderstandings surrounding the day of the Lord. Paul aimed to reassure believers that they have not missed the second coming of Christ and to provide insights into the events that must occur beforehand. The passage warns against deception regarding the timing and the nature of Christ's return. And we see it around us today. There are so many um, signs that are being mimic that are mimicking what was given as prophecy in the Bible to confuse us, to make us believe at some points the end is very, very near or that it's not near at all. All number two, the key themes and meaning. So one is warning against deception. Paul begins with a strong admonition not to be misled by false teachings or interpretations about the end times. He emphasizes that it is critical for us as believers to be discerning and grounded in our faith to avoid falling prey to misleading signs and messages. He also spoke about the day of the Lord. The day referred to is understand as the day of the Lord, which includes the return of Christ and the final judgment. So Paul states that this day will not come until certain events unfold. Number three is falling away. And this is apostasy, right? Falling away. Paul mentions a falling away or apostasy that must occur First, this refers to a significant departure from faith among believers. It suggests a time when many will abandon their faith in Christ, either due to persecution, false teachings, or societal pressures. And this apostasy serves as a precursor to the revelation of the Antichrist. Another aspect of the falling away is the implication for believers. So this falling away wants us as believers to remain steadfast in our faith, highlighting the importance of community. We can't do this alone. We have to do it together. The importance of teaching, like what I'm doing now and those who are out here trying to study the word of God and dissect it and bring it to the body um, so that we are all again, accountable to resist such temptations, okay? Number four is revelation of the man of sin, which is the Antichrist. The man of sin, sin, which is referred to in this verse as the son of perdition. The man of sin is interpreted as the Antichrist, a figure who embodies rebellion against God and opposes everything that God represents the title son of perdition signifies destruction or eternal separation from God indicating the ultimate fate of this figure this is clear God's judgment upon the enemy Satan and those that follow him is final he has already there is no salvation for him he is already doomed and he knows that that is why he's trying to take so many with him exaltation above god is another aspect of the revelation of the man of sin which is the antichrist the antichrist will not only oppose god 
but he will exalt himself above all that is worshipped. Okay, this indicates a desire for absolute power and authority, positioning him as himself as a rival to God. This self-exaltation represents the characteristics of pride and rebellion that are central to the enemy's nature. And if we liken this to haters, right? They don't like us, but they mimic us. They want to be like us. And it's the same with the enemy. He doesn't like God. He wants to exalt himself above God. He believes he is greater than God. He believes he deserves to be God. But he does everything God does. Or he tries to do everything that God does. Number five, claiming divine authority. Another aspect would be sitting in the temple. The Antichrist is said to sit in the temple of God, proclaiming himself as God. This suggests a literal or symbolic act of assuming authority over spiritual matters, directly challenging the sovereignty of God. Now, there is also the aspect of temple imagery. The mention of the temple can symbolize the place of worship and God's presence. By claiming divinity in the sacred space, the Antichrist deceives many and leads them away from the true God. So this act fulfills a prophetic narrative where false messiahs rise to prominence during the end times. Number six is spiritual and practical implications. One aspect of this, I would say, is in, is encouragement to remain vigilant. The passage emphasizes the need for us as believers to be watchful and discerning. The warning against deception encourages Christians to strengthen their faith, study the word of God, and remain engaged in their communities. Understanding of End time events is another critical aspect because the scripture provides a framework for understanding the sequence of end time events. That is why it's important to read the Bible, read Daniel, read um, Revelations, all these books that have the prophetic messages within them. Believers are encouraged to recognize the signs of the times, including the apostasy and the revelation of the Antichrist as indicators of the approaching return of Christ. AI isn't just about convenience, it's about control. And what happens when a system backed by AI becomes so powerful that it controls not just our actions, but our very decisions? Could it be part of a deception that leads to the rise of the Antichrist as prophesied in Thessalonians? Now, there is a conspiracy angle that I want to bring here, and it's about big tech and global power. Just hand me out. Now, here's where the conspiracy angle comes in. Some believe that big tech through AI and digital currencies could be part of a larger global agenda to centralize power and control. And I am one of them. Think about it. If everything we do is being monitored, recorded, and controlled by a handful of tech companies, doesn't that sound eerily similar to what Revelation warns us about? And let's be real here. It's not hard to imagine a future where the mark of the beast could be a digital ID or a biometric chip tied to your ability to buy, sell, or even participate in society, okay? But what, what do you think? Are we overreacting or could there be something deeper at play here? Is it just a coincidence that these technologies are emerging now? Or are we inching closer to the fulfillment of biblical prophecy? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Let's, let's be open to having a discussion about this. I think it's something that we really, really need to dis discuss. And with that, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we'll dive even deeper into how AI and digital currency could be laying the groundwork for a global system unlike anything we've seen before. You don't want to miss it.
Welcome to Pretty Fox University, where men and women of value are inspired by God, beauty, wisdom, and empowerment. Introducing our latest innovation, the Pretty Fox Journals. Whether you're jotting down notes from our episodes or tackling our episode assignments, we've got you covered with three specialized journals tailored to your preferences. Ladies, meet the pink journal crafted with elegance and sophistication. Its feminine charm makes note-taking a delightful experience perfect for capturing your thoughts and ideas in style. Gentlemen, say hello to the Teal Journal, designed with a touch of masculinity and class. Its sleek exterior and sturdy build ensure that your notes are kept safe and organized, empowering you to conquer every academic challenge with confidence. And for those of you who appreciate timeless elegance, we present the Gold Journal. With its luxurious design and universal appeal, it's the perfect companion for both men and women blending style with functionality seamlessly. Ready to elevate your notes? taking game purchase your pretty fox journals through the link in the description box below before we dive into the 11 crucial ways ai and digital currency might be shaping a global landscape unlike anything we've seen before I want to take a moment to invite you to join this conversation. If you're curious about how these technological advancements tie into our faith and the prophetic messages of the Bible, you're in the right place. Don't forget to hit that like button if you find value in our discussion. Your support helps spread the word. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time to join our growing community. Let's explore this together. Comment below with your thoughts and questions and share this video with friends who might be intrigued. Together we can navigate these complex issues with faith and wisdom. Now let's get into it. Here are the 11 ways AI could be laying the groundwork for a new global system. I'll start with number one, centralized control of financial transactions. Let me explain. Digital currencies, especially those issued by governments, allow for centralized oversight, meaning authorities can monitor and control all economic activities. This centralization can lead to a lack of privacy in financial transactions as everything is recorded and they're traceable. Consider a hypothetical scenario where a government implements a digital currency that tracks all purchases. If someone donates to a charity that the government disapproves of, they could face penalties or restrictions on their spending. So my advice here would be to like stay informed about the digital currency landscape and advocate for transparency and accountability in financial regulations. Consider using alternative currencies or payment methods that prioritize user privacy and advocate for ethical financial practices in your community. The second point I have here written down is increased surveillance and data collection. AI technologies enable the collection and analysis of vast amounts of personal data, allowing companies and governments to monitor individual behaviors closely. So this surveillance can lead to a society where personal freedoms are diminished and people are constantly under watch. Example, Imagine a, a scenario where AI algorithms analyze your purchasing habits and social media activity, activity to predict your behavior. If the system deems you a risk, it could limit your access to services or opportunities, effectively punishing you for your beliefs or your choices. Now, for us as believers, I would encourage you to prioritize your digital privacy by using secure platforms and advocating for data protection laws. Engage in conversations within your church about the importance of maintaining personal freedom and privacy, promoting awareness of how technology impacts individual liberties. The third point I have here is automation of jobs and economic displacement. We are seeing the rise of AI, which threatens to automate many jobs, particularly in sectors like manufacturing, 
customer service, retail, banking, that sort of stuff. And this can lead to a significant economic displacement where workers find themselves suddenly unemployed or underemployed, facing difficulties adapting to new job markets. For example, in a factory setting, robots might take over assembly line jobs, leaving many workers without employment. And these individuals may struggle to find new jobs that match their skills, leading to financial instability and emotional distress. Now, my advice here for those of you that are listening in, I would encourage you to advocate for retraining programs that equip individuals for new job opportunities in emerging fields. Support local initiatives that provide skills training and consider mentoring those who may be struggling to adapt to technological changes, showing compassion and encouragement. The fourth point I have written here is global standardization of transactions. What do I mean by this? The push for a single global currency or standard for digital transactions could streamline commerce but also risk the homogenization of local cultures and economic practices. And this could lead to a loss of cultural diversity as unique local practices are overshadowed by a dominant global standard. Example, um, think about how local farmers markets or unique artisan products could be overshadowed by large corporations that dominate a global digital marketplace like NFTs, leading to the erosion of community and a local identity. My advice here for Christian is to so support local businesses and advocate for practices that preserve cultural diversity. Engage with your community to highlight the importance of local goods and services, reminding others that economic choices can affect Christian values of stewardship and community. The fifth point I have here is erosion of national sovereignty. What do I mean by this? A global digital currency could undermine the sovereignty of individual nations by shifting power away from local governments and toward multinational corporations or global entities. And this could create a system where decisions affecting citizens are being made without local input. For example, picture a scenario where a multinational tech company dictates financial policies that affect multiple countries, disregarding the unique needs and rights of local populations. That is a big problem because not every country, you know, the rules basically are different or should be different based on that country's need or its makeup, right? My advice here would be to stay politically engaged by advocating for policies that protect national sovereignty. I'm not one who is big on politics, to be honest with you. And I've been trying to keep myself educated in the arena of politics. I've been listening to a lot of the debates. I've been listening to the, you know, campaigns between the VP and the VP elect, uh, VP, sorry, and uh, Donald Trump, that's Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And I've just been trying to get up to date on it because I've never been interested in politics before, but I would say to get familiar with it. And start participating in local governance and community discussions, emphasizing the importance of local input and decision making. You want to be a part of what, what's happening or at least create some resistance if what the government is doing goes against God's will for humanity or it goes against your beliefs. The, the next point I have, number six, is rise of cashless society. The increasing adoption of digital currencies is accelerating the transition to a cashless society. So this shift may limit individuals' ability to make anonymous transactions, raising concerns about privacy and control over personal finances. For example, 
Consider a future where individuals must have a digital identity to purchase everyday items, making it easier for authorities to track and control their spending. If someone opposes a government policy, their financial transactions could be restricted. And my advice to you all would be to educate yourself on the implications of a cashless society and explore ways to maintain financial privacy. Support initiatives that promote alternate payment systems and discuss the moral implications of surveillance and loss of, you know, anonymity with fellow believers like how we're having this in this uh in this in this conversation number seven is potential for control over personal freedoms what do i mean ai systems can be programmed to influence individual choices dictating not just financial transactions but also lifestyle choices based on behavior monitoring and this could lead to a society where people feel pressured to conform to certain norms for example imagine an ai that restricts asset access to certain services based on your social media activity or your spending patterns effectively coercing compliance with societal expectations so my advice would be to just remain grounded in your faith and your values amidst external pressures engage in discussions about personal freedoms and the ethical implications of technology in church groups and and emphasize the importance of standing firm in your faith against societal uh pressures number eight is manipulation of information and misinformation ai algorithms can manipulate information shaping public perception by promoting specific narratives or suppressing dissenting voices this can lead to a skewed understanding of reality and diminish the ability to make informed decisions what do i mean by this let me give you an example um, consider a scenario where a digital platform uses AI to filter news and information, prioritizing certain viewpoints while censoring others. This could lead to a population that is unaware or of alternative perspectives and critical issues. So the advice here would be to cultivate a discerning spirit by seeking diverse sources of information and engaging in critical thinking. This encourage, I would sorry, encourage discussions in your community about the importance of truth and transparency in media, fostering an environment where people can share and discuss various viewpoints. The ninth point I have written down is dependency on technology for daily living. As a society, uh, sorry, as society increasingly relies on AI and digital solutions for everyday tasks, there's a risk of becoming overly dependent on technology. This means that individuals could be making decisions um, based on vulnerability to technological and, and, and they, they find themselves you know, challenged because they're making these decisions and when there are technological failures or they're beginning to feel control, they are not able to sustain themselves when accessibility to those um, systems or platforms are possible. What do I, for example, um, imagine a community that relies solely on a digital app for accessing basic necessities like food delivery or transportation. If the app goes down or it's hacked, residents could find themselves in a precarious situation without access to essential services. So my advice here would be to, um, I would encourage you to balance, find a balance in technology use within your family and your community. Advocate for maintaining skills that don't rely on technology, such as cooking or gardening, to foster self-sufficiency. And discuss the importance of finding security and reliance not in, reliance not in technology, but in faith. The tenth point that I have jotted down here is ethical concerns in AI decision making. What do I mean by this? The development of AI raises significant ethical questions about decision making, particularly in areas like healthcare, law enforcement, and social services. Algorithms can perpetuate 
biases and inequalities leading to unjust outcomes for individuals and community. For example, consider a situation where an artificial intelligence system used in hiring processes discriminates against candidates based on biased data resulting in qualified individuals being overlooked. My advice here would be to advocate for ethical standards in artificial intelligence development within your community and beyond. Encourage conversations about fairness, justice, and compassion in technological advancements, reminding others that all people are created in the image of God and deserve equitable treatment. I have the 11th point, which is shifts in social dynamics and relationships. The rise of artificial intelligence and digital currencies can alter social dynamics as face-to-face -face interactions are replaced by digital communications. So this shift can lead to feelings of isolation and disconnect impacting community bonds. For example, picture a scenario where families choose to engage in online shopping or entertainment at the expense of family meals or gatherings resulting in a weakened familial connection and support system. So my advice would be to promote the importance of maintaining personal connections and community involvement, organize events or activities that foster face-to-face -face interactions and strengthen relationships, reinforcing the biblical call to love and support one another. The 12th point I have here is erosion of trust in institutions. What do I mean by this? As technology becomes more pervasive, people may begin to distrust institutions due to perceived manipulation, data breaches, or ethical concerns. And this erosion of trust can lead to societal fragmentation and skepticism toward authority. For example, imagine a community where residents no longer trust local government or in institutions after a scandal involving data misuse. So this distrust could lead to disengagement from civic duties or community participation. Therefore, my advice in the situation would be to encourage transparency and accountability in local institutions and foster a culture of trust through open dialogue and engagement. Promote biblical values of honesty and integrity within your community, reminding others of the importance of working together for the common good. All right, so we've reached the end. Let's just bow our heads in prayer and pray about this situation. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you today with a humble heart, seeking your strength and your guidance in these challenging times. I acknowledge that you are the creator of all things and your wisdom surpasses human understanding. Lord, as we navigate a world increasingly influenced by technology, I stand in faith against the schemes of the enemy that seek to manipulate, control, and deceive. Lord, I ask for your divine protection over our minds, over our hearts, over our souls. Shield us from the fear and anxiety that arise from the uncertainties of this di digital age. Help us to remain steadfast in our faith and to recognize that our security lies not in technology, but in you alone, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bind any spirit of fear that tries to creep into our hearts regarding the advancement in artificial intelligence and digital currency. I declare that we will not be led astray by misinformation, manipulation, or control. Your word says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For you had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I claim that promise upon us right now. Father, I pray for discernment and wisdom as we engage with these technologies. Guide our decisions and our actions so that they align with your will. Help us to be a light in this world, advocating for true justice and ethical standards in face of manipulation and control. Grant us the courage to speak out against injustices and to stand firm in our faith. I also lift up our communities there, God, asking for your hand of protection and guidance over them. Unite us in purpose and resolve as we navigate these changes together. May we support each other there, God, 
and hold fast to the truth of your word, which is our anchor in turbulent times. Lord, I ask for a revival of righteousness in our world. Let your spirit move through our communities, awakening hearts and minds to the importance of integrity, honesty, and compassion in all areas of our life, including technology. May your light shine through us, dispelling darkness and revealing the truth. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering our prayer. We place our trust in you and stand firm on the promises of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Pray. Amen. 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 Wow. What an eye-opening discussion we've had today about artificial intelligence and digital currency as they are laying the groundwork for a global system. If you found this exploration as intriguing as I did, don't forget to like this video. After all, thumbs up are the new amen. <laughs> and if you want to keep diving into conversations that matter, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future content. We're on a journey together and I want you to be a part of it. If you'd love to hear um, more from us, do join the family. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Drop a comment below sharing your insights or your questions. Who knows, your comment might just inspire our next video. And if you know someone who needs to hear this, go ahead and share it with them. Let's spread the word and encourage one another in these changing times. Remember, when it comes to navigating the the complexities of technology and faith. We're all in this together like a big family just without the awkward holiday dinners, right? Until next time, stay curious, stay faithful, and keep shining your light in this digital age. XOXO Crystal Jane.